He was born on 6th of June, 1901, here in Surabaya under the name of Kuzno Solihachio. He graduated as an architect in Bandung, and in the 20s, he founded the Indonesian Nationalist Party. In 1930, he stood trial for making chaos in the Dutch colonial society. After his time in prison, he was exiled with his family to Bankula on Sumatra in 1938. But when the Japanese came, the Dutch wanted to escort him to Australia. He was set free by the Japanese and were together with them. His name was Sukarno. In this video I'll talk about Sukarno. Is he a good guy or a villain and a traitor? So Sukarno's goal was to establish an independent Indonesia. That's why he worked together with the Japanese. And the Japanese goal was to control the Indonesian population because Sukarno was immensely popular. Now during the Japanese occupation, the Dutch were put into these internment camps. Millions of Indonesians were put into forced labor projects. Think of the Sumatra Railway, the Death Railway. The conditions for these Ramushas, these Indonesian laborers, were even worse. They died much more of them. The Japanese confiscated all the rice, famine struck, and they also like trained these, you know, Pamudas, these young Indonesian nationalists. During the Bersia period, countless Europeans and Indo-Europeans are slaughtered in a very brutal way. And after that, Sukarno, you know, led the Republican forces against the Dutch. After World War II, the Dutch said Sukarno is a traitor. He worked together with the Japanese and, well, the Dutch um, forget to realize here is that the Dutch themselves were occupiers as well. So basically what Sukarno did was like he worked together with the Japanese under the, under the motto of, well, the enemy of the enemy is my friend. Did Sukarno know about like the harsh conditions the Dutch were put in? Well, in this internment camps. Well, yes, because um, his um, teacher, his, his tutor, uh, his architect tutor, uh, Wolf Schumacher, he was uh, not pitted, put into a camp. So Sukarno might have known about these brutalities done by the Japanese. So yeah, the price that had to be paid for independence. Now, then you have like the Bersia period, uh, after he uh, was put under pressure by these uh, youngsters, these Pamudas, and declared the Independent Republic of Indonesia on the 17th of August 1945. Now, after that, there was like a whole big uh, mass orgy of violence of Indonesian youngsters against Europeans. Many countless men, women and children were slaughtered in the most brutal way. And was it done in the name of Sukarno? Well, no, because like the American historian Anderson wrote in Java at Time of Revolutions 1972, is that it was not basically one Indonesian revolution during this Persia period, but there were like councils of them. There was just like these councils amount of ransacking plundering, looting, murderous Indonesian gangs that just went their own way. It was not under the specific order of Sukarno. Sukarno himself did not want that. It was just a chaotic, just a very, very chaotic period where it was very hard for whatever party to establish anything. And that was it. There was a final video about the history of Indonesia. And now you may say, wait a minute. I missed something. What about, for example, all the old kings on Java and on Bali? And what about the, 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 the military dictatorship of Soharto? Why didn't you shed light on that? And there are so many other territories you didn't cover. Why? Well, look, Indonesia is a pretty big country. And I did my best to cover a lot, and especially like the history that really interests me. But because it's so big, I was not able to cover everything. I eventually re returned to this lovely country to cover some more. But this was it for now. I hope you enjoyed it. Like and if you have not already, subscribe. And then you'll see me back in a new video series about the history of 